While drills can be useful, they don't actually build skills, at least in the way that they're usually used. However, if you use the right ones in the right way, it can be a powerful tool. Hi everyone, Andrew here, helping you help your swimmers get faster. We're going through quick fire controversies where I take a controversial topic and then I'll let you know what I think. If you have one you want me to discuss, drop it in the comments and I'll address it sooner than later. Skills win races. And so skill development obviously becomes really important, but how you think about it really matters. And to optimize skill development, we're gonna to have to think about things differently. When it comes down to it, we want to identify the key skills, we want to use the most efficient and most effective strategies to improve those skills, and then we need to train those skills. And that's a very different process than just doing drills. Just practicing a drill doesn't do anything. At its best, a good drill is going to help swimmers feel something very different, and it's going to provide them objective feedback as to whether they're swimming effectively or not. And the reality is most drills don't accomplish either of those things. Let's say you do have a great drill that helps swimmers feel this key skills effectively and it provides them great feedback as to what they're doing. Even then, just doing the drill doesn't cut it because doing the drill doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be able to do it when they swim full stroke. Swimmers have to practice what they're learning with the drill and they have to take it directly into their full stroke swimming so they can practice the drill and then do some full stroke swimming and then repeat that process multiple times until what they're doing in the drill, what they're feeling in the drill is actually starting to show up in full stroke swimming. If that doesn't happen, the drill's pretty much useless. It's not transferring, it's not showing up in their actual swimming. And to facilitate that process, you can start to do the drills under pressure. You can add speed, you can add stroke count, you can add stroke rates, you can use resistance, you can combine them in different ways. But that's gonna really challenge those skills in the drills and it's gonna make it more likely that it shows up in their actual swimming because you're actually starting to train those skills. That's gonna make them more robust. That's gonna make them more resilient. And then you can do the same thing when they're actually swimming. That's when drills work. They're part of a system as opposed to just a random thing that's being done to improve skills. So the key is to pick drills that force swimmers to swim differently and work on the skills that build speed. Then you start challenging the drills and you start incorporating regular swimming, alternating back and forth between the drills and the swimming, and then you start really challenging the swimming. It's, again, it's part of a process of which drills are one component. Drills don't build skills, they're part of a system. Drills can be useful for showing swimmers what's possible, showing them different ways to move, but it's the actual swimming where they make it happen that's what really matters and that's what needs to occur in order to get the changes that you're looking for. Drills alone won't do the job. Swimmers have to learn to take what they do in the drills and get it to show up when they're swimming fast and when they're swimming under pressure. When that happens, drills can be an effective part of the entire process, but if not, it's almost just a waste of time. If you wanna learn more about how to effectively implement drills, check out the video here.